All right. Let's talk about our second player that we've got here mm. on the show sheet, Jaleel McLaughlin. Uh, Dynasty League Football September startup ADP was RB63. Today on Keep Trade Cut, RB43. So in these past two weeks, he's really gotten some run, right? Yeah. Uh, in week five, nine for 68 on the ground, caught three mm. of four targets for 21 yards and a touchdown, 16.4 points. In week six, or actually I have these weeks backwards. That was week six. Week five was mm. seven for 72. Three targets caught him all, 21 yards, and another mm. touchdown, 17.9. Yep. Half PPR points in that game. Mm. Um, Sean Payton found another one, I think. You know, like he just fought, has a way of finding these running backs, especially some of these maybe slighter yeah. running backs, smaller running backs, and finding a way to, to optimize them in his offense. And sure. he looks good, right? Like, I mean, like you look at his yeah. like testing metrics and they look horrible, but he's one of those mm-hmm. players where on the field, he does not look like how he tests. He looks much more explosive. Um, mm-hmm. Both the receiving touchdowns were screens where he made something happen, especially this yep. one this week, week where like the pass was like off, kind of tipped it up to himself, caught it, made a move, got down. Highlight there. real. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that he's going to be a part of this offense. Uh, I would guess that if someone's going to give up some touches to him, some opportunities, it's going to be some Ajay Pirine whenever mm-hmm. Javante is healthy. He, I think he's still yeah. going to be part of that offense. But what do, we, what do we do with him? Because, like, is he worth buying? What's Because what's it going to cost to buy him? I don't know how, what someone's actually going to be able to give him up for. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit of a wet blanket here, and I'll preface this by saying that it has almost nothing to do with his talent or his ability. Um, it's multi-layered, right? Um, the volatility of this team and the history of the head coach are the first things that I look to. You know, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara are the running backs that people think of when they think of Sean Payton's tenure in New Orleans. But forever, he was the poster boy for where do these RBs keep coming from? And they would just just the spin cycle of guys coming in and out, looked effective for very short periods of time. And then next thing you know, they're, they're absolutely gone. And those were first and third round picks in Ingram and Kamara. The other thing is that, and don't get me started on his start to this tenure in um, Denver, because it's starting off as poorly as you could ever ask it to, right? But the other thing with um, McLaughlin is that he's 5'7", 187, which is not bad, right? We're showing, like, it's it's not unplayable. We're seeing guys start to succeed a little bit more, but those guys are coming at the wide receiver position. The kicker is that he is the all-time NCAA career leader in rushing attempts at 1250. To put that in perspective, Jamar Gibbs came into the NFL with 383 attempts. That is an incredible amount of mileage on a guy that size. So he's if he's going to be taking you know on the roll this year that I think he's going to, which because you know like you said, P Ryan looks good, not great. Williams still struggling to come back from his injuries, new injuries flaring up. It does feel like he's going to have a moment this year, and he could be a contributor to a win now team. But as far as some guy that I think is going to be a piece of the pie long term, I'd be very, very cautious. I think that the way he's been used these last two weeks is the optimal way to use him and that any more mm-hmm. opportunities in this is probably not going to be good for him in the long run. Yeah. Um, I think he is best on these touches and spurts. And mm-hmm. without these touchdowns, if you just look at his days, you know, they're OK days. They're flex yeah. considering days. And that that can be okay. That can be depth on a team, right? You yeah. might need you need players like that to be able to fill in when injuries and bye weeks happen. But is this a player you want to go out and acquire? I don't know because if someone has Julian McLaughlin, they pick, probably picked him off waivers, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe they are willing to take a process play of you send them a third or two thirds, and they're like, sure, I, it's free money because I I got yeah. him for fab and I'll take it. But I have a hard time believing anyone's actually going to do that. I bet everyone's holding out for a second, and I'm just not going to pay mm-hmm. a second for him. Yeah. So it's this tough thing where it's like, I, I don't think you can acquire him. I mean, you can go ahead and try for something really cheap and just see if the person who has him is okay with it. With that yeah, said, it's if, a very... If, go ahead. Yeah. Now, I was going to say, it's a very... We've seen that we've seen this play a lot of times and you just have to wonder, you know, are you going to catch the person who's not realizing the situation might actually be what it is? Yeah. And, and then on the flip side of that is if you do have Drew McLaughlin and someone's mm. hounding you for him and trying to send you offers, I'd hold out for the second. <laughs> you know, I'm, mm. I'm, that's the stance I'm going to take on him where it's the I'll buy for a third, but I'm selling for a second with him. And, not, and anything else is just not it's I'm just going to hold, you know? Yeah, I do think 
the way that their rushing attack, they've split it up very nicely amongst the guys they've used. And everybody's looked like a contributor. They don't, there's not one guy that you really see that you go, okay, they're going to have to give somebody else the ball because this guy's not getting it done. Um, and I don't know if that is something that's going to last season long, but as far as this season goes, I don't see anybody's role going away. Can be opportunity in that. There can also be peril in that. So you just have to figure out, you know, is this going to keep up? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's, it's one of the, he's falls into the long list of these running backs where it's like free money, but you know, it's hard to sell because you're not going to mm-hmm. get it, it. Yeah. It's just one of these players where it's like it, I, and more often than not, if you happen to have him because you picked him up off of waivers, you just got this free money and he's probably just going to stay on your team and you'll get to use him occasionally. Yeah. That's, that'll be what it is. You're, you're, you're shooting for, and I know the easy comparison and it's easy for a reason is Philip Lindsay. Right. And that's mm-hmm. for a myriad of reasons, but you know, if you're just looking at it at bird's eye view, you know, 10,000 feet looking down, nobody was, if you were trading for Philip Lindsay back then, you're probably kicking yourself, <laughs> you're probably k- kicking yourself now. But if you had Philip Lindsay back then, you were probably happy. So to your, to your point, you know, like you said, house money, maybe just let this one take off on its own. All right. We got a question here in the chat from Derek. This is a redraft mm-hmm. question, which is perfectly fine, even though this is a dynasty mm-hmm. show, because we're in redraft season. We're trying to win. Everybody's trying to win right now. Okay. 10 team, half PPR, two flex. Thoughts on this trade offer I just received? He said he would mm-hmm. send Travis Kelsey and Raheem Mostert, get Justin Jefferson and Evan Ingram. What do you think, Chuck? Mm-hmm. It's an interesting one. I, I, I'm, I'm probably, oh man, I can't believe it. I'm probably taking Je- Jefferson and Ingram. Um, I haven't you. loved what I've seen from Kelsey. Mostert, I, he's been nice, but you know, come on, we all know what's happening in Miami right now. We can see it. Um, Jefferson, you hate to see the hamstring pop up. You know, they just said he was doubtful or, uh, yeah. he might be doubtful for next week. I'm not even sure if he's going to play. Ingram is really the surprise there, right? He's been a stabilizing force in the tight end game. And I'd be happy to take that upgrade from Jefferson to Mostert to get that. Yeah. Ingram is actually one of the only reliable tight ends we have. So this year, mm-hmm. um, I would say it's a little bit surprising, um, but I actually don't think it's that surprising. I, I thought he, mm-hmm. this would be something like he would be doing in this offense. I thought his role was kind of locked in personally. Um, yeah. The only thing was I did, I expected there to be other tight ends doing the same things that he is, like Pat Fryermuth, and that's not <laughs> happening. Or, yeah. Derek, or David Njoku, like those tight ends aren't happening. So now we find mm-hmm. out he's one of the only ones from that section uh, mm-hmm. that is actually doing what we had hoped. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that's no, you're for me. No, you're absolutely right. The um, nobody else is holding up their end of the bargain except for him. Yeah, another trade here from Nat three twenty two. I am a rebuilding team, and I got Jaleel for zero fab, then traded him in a late fourth for a third to a contender. I'll take the upgrade and pick personally because they will only go up in values. I mean, I can't fault you for getting the free pick when you picked him off a zero mm-hmm. fab. Maybe you could have held out for longer, uh, for a little bit more, but it's hard to argue too much with just getting the free, mm. free draft pick. Yeah. The, um, the, the stock for him, I don't think is going to be much higher than it is right now. I don't think it's going to dip lower, but I don't think, you know, if you're tra- if you're looking at this as this is the sell now, I don't think that's going to be, it, you're going to be able to convince people through any more body of work. You know, like what's happened now should be enough to get you more. And if it's not, take what you can get. That's true. You have to always remember your own league's marketplace. Some of the advice that is given is, you know, it's general. Like if you can do this, Mm. do this. But like not every league is like that. In some leagues, hey, he could only upgrade a fourth to a third. Like everybody else in the (laughs) league is looking at Jaleel McLaughlin like, yeah, we don't care. You know, Mm. if this is what you can get, this is what you can get. And that maybe there's a conversation in that in that scenario where, hey, just hold on to him. But as he mentioned, he's a real bu- rebuilding team. He's just looking to stockpile some picks here. Can't argue with it. I'm sorry. I'm saying he, I, I don't know that for sure, uh, Nat. But. All right. One more question in the chat, and then we'll move on to our last player of the day. Chris is asking, should I trade away Waller to get Brees Hall? My running back room is bad, and I have Laporta. The Hall owner said he is willing to throw in an extra player, too. I have my eye on f- uh, flex like Zay Flowers. I'm assuming this is redraft. Um, mm. based on the, the players involved. And yeah. I would say that if you could get a player on top of Brees Hall, 
for Darren Waller, you are stealing, my friend. And you should, I mean, I would take absolutely Brees Hall over Darren Waller. You have Sam Laporta, who I would take, you know, like over Waller rest of the season pretty easily. Yeah. I mean, this is a smash, right, Chuck? Yeah, the only way that my brain is computing this is that this is a four tight end premium Giants fans <laughs> league or New York league with Waller and Brees. That's a home run. Waller for Brees Hall alone right now with Laporta. My goodness, you get somebody like Zay Flowers on top of that, you are – crushing. That, that, that's a framer. You're, pr- you're printing that out. You're going to Michael's and you're buying yeah. a frame and you're putting it next to your bedside and you're kissing it like this every night. That's premium. Yeah, that's one of those trades you, you come back for the draft next year and you're grabbing your frame. You're like, hey, remember when we did that trade? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You might not get another one after that from him. So maybe Yeah, yeah. The, the, the phone, he's, your number's blocked after that. <laughs>